When I write ya All across the USC, Compton, Watts Bay to LA From on to California From valley to valley We represent that killer county So if you keeping it real on your side of your town You tune in to Gangsta Chronicles Gangsta Chronicles We gon' tell you how we go Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Oh. Gangsta Chronicles, this is not your average show. You're now tuned into the real MCA Big James and Big Steel. This is strictly from the streets. Hello. We represent the James. Being successful and being out there, being from the hood, the homies ought to respect that 100. Bam. The homies know who I'm fucking with. Or the Marauder dies. The rest of the... I can't take the whole hood. The right. whole hood wasn't with me. Exactly. My journey was with that motherfucker, that motherfucker, and that motherfucker. Them the ones I'm loyal to. Just because you homies don't mean you got to be or you loyal to everybody 100. I got your back, but I'm not 100. This is my exactly. 100 here. Right here, I see. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of cats in the hood don't understand that. Like dealing with Suge, you know... We had so many motherfuckers want to be a part of it just because he bring you aboard and say, come to the office, don't mean I owe you what I'm giving him. Uh. Because this is my, this motherfucker is beating them motherfuckers. This motherfucker done win 100 for me. I owe him. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got to give him. I got him. So motherfuckers don't understand the difference. Just because we homies don't mean we fuck with each other. How many, how many motherfuckers you got in the hood that you really don't know? Straight up. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? We only accepted the ones that was born and raised in the hood. Uh-huh. Now, these motherfuckers that came from Watts and now they claim the hood, uh-huh. oh, you, you come along. But when you get rich, man, everybody expects you to take them. You can't take everybody with you. But showing love and respecting the homies is, I got the ones that was day one with me <clears throat> and they good. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what respect is. And if the homies see your grind and see you come up from here to there, them the ones going, you don't know what the fuck you talking about, homie. Uh-huh. Watch your mouth. Don't speak on the homie like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the respect come from. The homies that you fuck with that got your back and you hear that type of shit. And you ain't got to worry about that bullshit. But you don't have that today. Uh-huh. Because everybody want to come up. Everybody want free money. Definitely. Everybody, like, um, all these experiences we're talking about, and I'm pretty sure early on, did you have to deal with any of that stuff? I've been dealing with it my whole career. I've been dealing with it my whole career. I ain't going to say no names, but there was a homie from my neighborhood that was in and out the pen, got a good name. The whole night, everybody respected him. He was straight up, came out, was like calling mandatory meetings in my barrio. Like, everybody had to pull up or else motherfuckers was getting checked. Like, he was putting, like, that structure back in. And uh, he thought that I was some kind of sucker. And I had told him at one point, he pulled up to my to my studio session, I'm going to put it out there. He put out a Tech 9 on me. You know what I'm saying? My own homeboy from my hood. And I told him, what you going to do with that? You ain't going to shoot me. You know what I'm saying? You think I'm supposed to be intimidated? I'm from your body, homie. They call me criminal from Silver Lake for a reason. I mean, you think I'm going to bitch out because you got a strap on me now? And he's like, oh, you got to do this, do that, do that. That motherfucker got checked out of my hood. None of my homeboys claim him no more. So when you keep it authentic with your people, it doesn't matter how much a motherfucker try to go against you, your people are going to ride for you. You know what I'm saying? Right, my right. homeboy my home, my home in the other room right here, he just got out from, from beating a life sentence. He had a life sentence. He wasn't coming out because this whole, everything that, uh, everything going on in the, the world right now, coronavirus, my other homie, Iki, just got out from doing 17 years. He smoked the motherfucker. He got out from 17 years. They parted him. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he's in the other room right now. Uh, I'm giving homeboys from my neighborhood opportunities right now. So shit like that, my homeboys don't forget that shit. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Tries to come be salty. You think my homeboys over here that I'm breaking bread with that I'm taking care of and, and helping feed their families are just gonna be like, oh yeah, fuck criminal too? Nah, I don't go down like that. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy how people just thinking. Really, you, got, you deal with that though. Yeah, that's when you crazy. come you from this that's, walk of that's, life, that's real loyalty. Yeah, when you, you just explain real loyalty, respect. Yeah, when you come homies. from this walk you know of life, mm-hmm. still, and you come from this banging shit, and you make a name for yourself, or you start a, I don't give a fuck, even if you the neighborhood nigga with the sack, and you, it's going to be a motherfucker that feel like, nigga, you, you got to kick in. Straight up. I don't give a fuck if I done put in on it or done with it, nigga. You from over here, so kick in. So sometimes you have to stand your ground about shit. Straight right. up. Yeah, man, so... 
you start your own empire. When did you really know you was on to some shit, dog? When that bad call came from David Ayer. I knew it before because everyone was like, man, you this, this, that, this, and that. And I'm keeping it real. My old label, there was a moment from 2010, I think, through 2015. They told me straight out, nothing else on this label is successful right now. Anything else is pretty much flopping. My shit, I'm not I'm gonna even fall back and not drop shit. I'm re-signing you, criminal. Three albums a year, let's go. And I was just dropping shit. I, I carried that label for five years by myself. So I was like, man, doing all this, I'm doing all this work. I'm like, fuck. Other people are kicking back, collecting. It's time for me to do this shit. And then I got that call from David Ayer, started getting the movies. Agents started popping. I'm like, yeah, it's time for do, to do this shit myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, because this is a cold spot right here, man. I mean, but that's what usually happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you get another avenue, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You got the other avenue outside of the music that that were able to show you, man, I can do this shit on my own. Not to say it's any disrespect from what I was mm -hmm. doing, yeah. but at one point in time, you got to stand on your own two feet. You know what I'm saying? You got to, especially if you got a family, kids, you know. I can't be waiting on another nigga to tell me when I can put a record straight out. Up, up. I can't be waiting on another nigga to hand me a check. I need to be collecting that money every month instead of every fucking six to seven, eight months. You straight feel up. me? So that's how we get, especially for us artists who are in this game of trying to support ourselves. We see that light, like, fuck that shit. Like, no disrespect to you, but yeah, you just gotta do your own thing. it's time for me to start eating on And some people hate that you want to eat on your own, too, on your own shit, off your own plate. You get a lot of scenarios where motherfuckers be like, oh, they get mad. Like, the shit I was telling you about, motherfuckers was getting bread. Mm -hmm. And then you go, okay, well, I'm going to start collecting my own bread now. Oh, man, I got a problem with that. Like, man, I got a problem with... You got a problem that I want to collect my own fucking bread? That's, a, that's, like, that's, that's a red flag. That's, right that's an issue. Like, yeah, like up, it's my up. bread. Like, you got a problem that I want to collect my own fucking money. But they don't feel that that's the way it's supposed to go. Exactly. Why are you asking me that? The, the favorite word I heard, oh, you don't trust me? I done heard shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 900 motherfucking times. Oh, what, what, you don't trust me? You got to go to somebody else? Oh, no, I trust you, big dog. Then the story is over. It's over. But he continued to dick the shit. I'm going to continue to dick you. But that's all I'm going to tell you. Do you trust me? Mm -hmm. I, 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 well, shit. Uh, yeah, well, you know, they give you that slick real story right quick, and you be back like, damn, this motherfucker just got me to... I'm back in the very same position I was in. Right I did all that talking for nothing. <clears throat> right? So, no, some motherfuckers hate, but it's, it's cool when motherfuckers are going to respect that. Like, hey, you want to go do your thing? And it's opportunity there not to hate, but you know, I got a family, I got a wife, I got kids, I got bills, you get me? I could be getting all of this instead of a portion of this, because in in, in a sense, it's all me, really. Yeah, you get especially me? after a certain time in, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, as you build your family. You pay your dues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all pay our dues when, you know what I'm saying, somebody let us in the door, okay, fuck it, you know, but... At one point in time, man, fuck that, man, I can take my own trash out, man, yeah. fuck that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's real shit. So, criminal, tell me this, man. This movie shit gonna blow your shit up to another level, and it's something I'm gonna touch on because you know, you always rock with the brothers. You always was who you was, kept a gangster and everything, but you fuck with you know you fuck with us. Yeah. There was never no dissension. Y'all always made made motherfuckers feel love. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so you don't pretty much did a song with everybody, dog. Yeah. For black community, did you? Go that purposeful route, man, and say, I'm going to put out rap music and I'm not going to put no label on this shit. You know, I never liked the label. I mean, I always felt like that's why I always said I was a Latin of rap. I didn't like the, the term Chicano rap. I didn't feel like that that needed to be put on us. When I lived, like, when I'm not no disrespect, but when I think of Chicano rap, I think of a motherfucker that's rapping over all these beats with, like, some Dr. Seuss rhymes. You know what I'm saying? Like, some rhyming the very last words. Like, nah, we don't do that, homie. Mm -hmm. We get down. I, I could spit. I could hang with the best of them. Yeah. I, my skin's brown. I got brown pot on my stomach. I'm from a barrio. That don't mean shit. I could come in and spit my... Everywhere I grew up, everywhere I went, no matter what, it's like uh, I always blended with both sides. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. you could rhyme. You yeah, always could rhyme. Yeah, That's what right. I'm saying. You could rap. Yeah, yeah. So I blended with both sides. So to me, it was like, 
I didn't really feel like they needed to be a label. You know what I'm saying? And then and then when I started making tracks with, with, with artists that weren't brown, to me, I was like, okay, this is a level up. Like, at the end of the day, we, we're trying to get to that level where we're getting recognized mainstream. And this is the way to do it. We got to be recognized that we're working together. Because out here, we live together, motherfuckers, live in the same bodies, whether they like it or not. Same hoods, blocks, motherfuckers share them. You know what I'm saying? So... It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, because I, I saw, like I said, I saw the come up, man, and I was like, damn, he got a song with him, he got a song with him, and it was like crossing over. Like I said, everybody was fucking with the music, man. Did you ever get any flack from your community for that, man? Because, you know, like you said, we go back to the hater shit, motherfuckers see you ascending. Did you ever have any motherfuckers that had a problem with what you was doing? Quite a few times. As a matter of fact, I ain't going to say the name of the hood, but there was a time when I did a song with uh, Spider Loke from Gina, and... Um, Motherfuckers started getting on my line talking about they had a problem with it. So I, I, t I invited them on my video shoot on some G shit. I said, we're about to shoot a video right here. I got a gang of bodies that are pulling up. You guys are more than welcome to pull up and s let me know your issue in person. You know what I'm saying? So they did. They pulled up. And a couple of OGs pulled up. And they tried to get at me strong. And uh, I had a couple of my homies with me. And I t they tried to speak. And I told them, nah, I'm going to speak for myself. So I got a homie on the side. I said, hey, homie, with all due respect, whatever beef you guys got, that ain't my shit. And at the end of the day, this is how I feel my family. I'm, I'm making music to, to put on for our community to be recognized. So you expect your your little petty beef and your issues to hold back what I'm doing and, and fuck my shit, homie. Don't come to me and, and, and try to tell me how to run my business, like on some respectful shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, like 10 minutes later, they're in the video in the back doing the, the gangster boogie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, uh, motherfuckers just gotta be told, like, sometimes they, they're stuck in a mentality that, that they were trained or it was instilled in them, but they ain't thinking for themselves, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. I think for myself, homie, I know, I'm a motherfucking leader. I ain't a follower, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta learn how to talk to a motherfucker yeah. and tell a nigga straight up, this is what it is. I don't know disrespect, straight but up. I'm a grown-ass man. Mm -hmm. And this is the rules I set for myself. Now, whatever you got going on the outside, that's your problem. But this shit right here, this ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Right. This, this, is, this, this, is, this is off track. Right. So motherfuckers need to learn that too. Because niggas try to, they try to infiltrate your shit with their little beefs. Yeah. You get me? And at the end of the day, it's all hate anyways. Because they, they, they just hating because their little homie on the block ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if they really could squash that beef and get their people to rap with them, he probably would have did it them down. So, you know what I'm saying? Finally get 